the, the field of gravitational wave astronomy is now getting quite hot. Uh, it actually began uh, quite a long time ago, originating uh, with a man named Joseph Weber, who was a physicist at the University of Maryland. And he actually built the first gravitational wave detector to try to capture a gravity wave. This was back in the 1960s. But he was never able to really uh, confirm a wave. Um, and uh, then serendipity uh, came into play. Uh, there were these two radio astronomers, I mentioned them before, named Joseph Taylor and Russell Hulse, who were studying pulsars. And they uh, stumbled upon something very interesting, a binary pulsar. And maybe, Andrea, you can explain a little on how this led to our indirect confidence that gravity waves are actually out there. Uh, well, so let me tell you a little bit about a pulsar first. A pulsar is, um, at its core, is a neutron star, which Kip mentioned a couple minutes ago as one of the objects that we would like to study more deeply with gravitational waves. But a pulsar is a dead, dense star collapsed down to about the size of Manhattan and spinning as fast as a kitchen blender. <laughs> and uh, it emits a radio beacon. So you, you got to kind of pause and imagine Manhattan spinning as fast as a kitchen blender. Um, <laughs> But uh, they, so there's a radio beacon coming out uh, one side of this, this star, and, and the star is spinning so quickly. And every time the beacon crosses your line of sight, you see a pulse. That's why it's called a pulsar. And um, some friends of mine, actually, if we could play that first slide, the, the top sound on that first slide. This is the sound. These are friends of mine. Um, Michael Kramer and Ben Stappers converted the radio beacon from this pulsar, which uh, has a, a, a three quarters of a second period, so each tick is about three quarters of a second. They converted it into a sound so we could hear what's actually an electromagnetic wave. But this is what a pulsar would sound like if you could hear it. So they're basically celestial clocks. And, um, and Russell Hulse and Joe Taylor, Russell Hulse was the, uh, the graduate student at the time, um, got pretty excited about these clocks because they realized that they could study they could do a lot of tests if they could find some of these really interesting clocks. So they got very excited about this binary pulsar. And um, let's play, before I show you the binary pulsar, can we play that, the next sound? Because this is closer to the, this is closer to the period of the pulsar that they were looking at. This has an 89 millisecond period. And this is about how fast the, the pulsar they were studying, 1913 plus 16. So they got very excited about this pulsar. And, and then the next slide, if we could go to the next slide, has, um, oh, thank you. The, this is actually a, a graphic um, from the Australia Telescope National Facility. And here you see uh, an image of these two, you know, one of them's a pulsar, and it's spinning around another object, which we believe to be a neutron star. And you see the radio beacon, that blue beacon, that's the radio beacon shining out and emitting these pulses. And you also see these two massive objects rippling the space time around them. And just play it one more time, because it's so fun. Um, and so you see, if you watch the green grid now, don't get too caught up in the cute yellow stars. Watch the green <laughs> grid, and notice that you see these ripples of space-time you know, propagating away from the system. And what Russell Hulse and Joe Taylor realized is that this system, that the gravitational wave was, would actually be taking energy away from the system. So actually, over time, these two pulsars should actually speed up and start going faster and faster around each other. They're actually coming closer coming together. Coming closer together. And that this was predicted um, by general relativity. And so over the course of, of the next uh, 30 years, they and, a, and another colleague, Joel Weisberg, um, measured this, this shrinking of the orbit. And um, they, I, have, I have a graph to show you. The next slide, if you show the next slide, I think it has a graph. Here's, here's a... Here's the most scientific graph I think we're going to show tonight. Um, you see on, the, on the, the solid line, I'll just tell you, the solid line is the actual prediction of general relativity. And the dots are their measurements. So these are Smack Russell Hulse, Joe Taylor. <laughs> yeah. Smack so, on. So, the, so in other words, it, and you can see the year going across the bottom. So you can see that that took them 30 years to make that plot. So this is the orbit shrinking by about three meters a year. And that's what's amazing. <laughs> the astronomers could actually measure through this 
that the pulsars were, that the orbit was shrinking three meters a year. Right. Exactly right. It's about two, kilom two million kilometers across between those two pulsars. And they, out of two million kilometers, they could tell that it was shrinking by three meters a year. And, and that's what they're measuring. And, and so they measured, um, they, didn't, they didn't detect gravitational waves, but they measured this, this shrinking of this orbit exactly consistent with Einstein's prediction of gravitational waves. And gravity waves was the only way to explain the loss of energy from this system. It was the only way to explain so it. So that's the indirect evidence for gravity waves, right. which led to a Nobel Prize. Um, right. Because it was so beautiful, <laughs> smack dab accurate. 